welcome back to my channel today i thought i'd give you a pet room tour because i have not done one in this new house yet and we've been here for about six months but it has took me this long to be happy with where everyone is and be happy with the enclosures they're in and i'm finally ready to show you before we go ahead and take a look i assume you're watching this because you like animals and i just wanted to quickly talk about one of my ongoing partnerships which is follow previously known as wildlife collections so they create these bracelets where a percentage of the profit goes towards non-profit organisations that do conservation work with animal of your choice. In the past, they have raised over $362,000 towards saving wildlife, and your purchase directly helps wildlife in need. Each bracelet also comes with your own animal that you can track, and I feel like that really helps you feel connected to the species you're helping. So my bracelet, which has a little elephant on, tracks a bull elephant called Maguna Maguna, and he is older than I am, which is saying something, but in an ever-changing world, this is not always a certainty for elephants, and the donations of follow go directly towards fighting ivory poaching and elephant conservation in Kenya. So World of Collections are giving you guys a 20% off discount code that is on screen and also in the description if you'd like to check out their website and their bracelets that will also be linked below. But this is my pet room, it's nothing big, it's nothing crazy, but it fits everyone that it has to. So let's take a tour, starting with the rats. So starting on this side closest to the door, we have these storage tubs. And the first thing I want to say is yes, the rat's water is supposed to be yellow, it's a vitamin and mineral supplement, so just in case you were thinking of commenting about that, it is supposed to be yellow, but these tubs were from Ikea, and they're really good, I'll link them in the description. You can stack these and put whatever you want to, but inside of these, the top one has their regular mix, and I really need to make them some more today, so I will do that after I finish filming that. And then this one, has like all of the components of the mix, so cereals, pasta, the base mix, all of that is shoved into this one. And then in the bottom one is the litter tray bedding, so the back to nature bedding, and a scoop to get that out. Then on top of that I just have the rat's carrier. It's not the prettiest thing having all of the carriers on display, but in an emergency I would thank myself if there was a fire, or one of the rats has to be suddenly separated. Having that right next to the cage is really handy. And then just above that is the light switch. So moving round, we have my rat cage. This is the Pet Planet Rat and Ferret cage, and it currently has a naturalistic theme. And if you've not seen that video, I will leave that in the i cards and the description. So on the outside I have this ladder which is just hanging on the bars and all I do is take this off, open this door, hook it on like that and then they can come out when they want to. So in here at the moment I currently just have four boys and that is so squeaky and most of them are getting quite old so this is the youngest, this is pudding back here and then we have Whisper who is coming to the front. Then we also have Twix and Crumble. I will insert some footage of them when they're awake because right now they are supposed to be sleeping and they're probably getting quite annoyed that I'm talking during their sleeping time. So Whisper, don't fall, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, those are my four rats at the moment and this is their cage. So the underneath of the rat cage is not very interesting, nor is it very organized. It's just random supplies that I can't put anywhere else. And I'm really trying not to rely on this storage because eventually when I get a new cage, I want one that drops all the way to the floor. So these are things like spare photo props, their cleaning spray, um, clips and things to hang hammocks, and a tile that I can use to separate the two sections if I want to. And it's also good to use in summer, but not much going on underneath the rat cage, and it does get very messy. So moving on, next to the rat cage is the free roam area. This is the rat tree and this has a lot going on. At the top is a little house. We've got a java branch, a perch from Pepperoos, a foraging toy, toys from Clyde Twitter Climbers. They've also got a bed area in there, tunnels, and this is like a cardboard foraging area for them. And then we have a branch that goes all the way down to their dig box. 
So this whole area, even though there's so much going on already, I really want to get a couple of shelves to put like here and here for them to climb on. And also we have all of this space above the rat cage. I really want to get a big long shelf to go all the way along here to display all of their artwork. And I think that'll be really cute. So I'm on the hunt for a big enough shelf to put above the rat cage where they can't reach it. Moving around from that area, we have the windows. I do have quite a large window in here. And recently we got shutters installed. And these have been really good because I can have all of these bottom ones shut and not have direct sunlight shining on the rats or the other enclosures. But I can have the top ones open to let a bit of light in so I can take pictures or videos and still see what I'm doing. So these have been great. Also in summer, I can have the windows open to keep it cool but I don't have to worry about the cat or the rats escaping out the window. So these have been really great. They are really expensive, but they are really worth it. So I tried to keep the window still fairly empty, but we have a little succulent and then also the rat and mouse treat jar. And I need to find the lid for this. I will hunt that down after this video. And then on this side, we have a rat cactus. I get questions all the time asking where this was from. This was from Morrison's a couple of years ago and they definitely don't sell it anymore. So beneath the window is all of the rats free roam stuff. This is pretty hectic and it's definitely a trip hazard but I've tried to organise it and make it look somewhat nice. So if we go and start on this side underneath this table which has the rat tree on, I've just got a hide under there. You can't really see but the rats do enjoy going back there and hiding. And then we have their dig box which looks quite different to how it looked in the video. If you've not seen that where I did a planted garden for the rats, I will put that in the eye cards and the description. So this is looking a bit different. We have a very sad looking herb in the corner. And if you remember, this was a filtered pool with pebbles and also a fish tank filter. That has had to go temporarily because the extension cord that was connected to, I've had to move that and it no longer reaches. So when I figure that whole situation out, that might come back, but for now, it's just a plastic box with water and a piece of slate in. And that works perfectly fine for pea fishing and things. So this is their dig box. They've got a cork tunnel. This, as I said earlier, goes all the way up to their rat tree. And this is the pea fishing area. On the actual floor, which by the way, we now have nice hard floor. No more rats and carpet, which was so disgusting. This is so much easier to sweep and mop and keep clean and just makes having rats so much easier. But on this side, we have a fabric tunnel. We've also got some of their like agility kit pieces and then also a cardboard box. This wooden hide thing, some of their foraging toys. And then at the back is Crumble's packing peanut pit. <laughs> So this I made for them for a video and once they'd had their fun I had every intention of just throwing it away but Crumble would not let me do that, he loves this, he plays in this every single day so I cannot throw this away, this is his and it will stay there for the foreseeable. So moving round from the window we have this Ikea Calyx unit and on the top is an empty Exoterra which I had every intention of filling, I know exactly what animal I want to put in here and I was going to get them this month but other things have come up and they are taking a lot more priority but I will fill this eventually, I've got all the supplies for this and that should be coming sometime soon, not as soon as I planned for but it will be coming. But next to that is just the protein powder for my snail and then all of these are filled with supplies for the rats and the mice. I'll just show you a couple, this one has rat hammocks in. This one has all of the mouse hammocks in, and then things like this, like spare foraging toys and toys for the rats during their free roam. Things like that are all in all of these storage units. So moving around, we have my reptile and invertebrate rack, and this has been my dream for such a long time and it's almost full, so once it is, I won't have any more space for anything else. So don't go asking if I'm getting anything crazy like an iguana or 10 more leopard geckos because this is it, this is the space I'm working with, and after that we are pretty much full. So at the top is another storage box with rat food things. This is my spray for my invertebrates. This is my air purifier which is currently turned off, and you can really see how badly I painted this wall, so let's not look at that. So this is a big, empty exoterra. This is a large, wide, I think, 
and I bought this because I saw it second hand, it was a bargain, it was £60 and these usually go for about £200 plus if you're going to buy them new which I would have had to eventually because I am an exoterra girl through and through, I love the way they look and I wanted this to all be unified so I was on the lookout for one of this size and I just could not pass up the bargain. I was not intending to fill this anytime soon, I just wanted to buy it so that I had it. But I found my dream reptile for rehoming and that never happened so next week this is going to have an animal living in it. So this I'm going to keep a secret but next to this is a tiny baby exoterra and I did used to have my stick insect in this. One of my channel members kindly sent this and since my stick insect passed away I've not been too sure what to do with it but I've stuck my dubia roaches to feed my gecko with in this because I just want them to have a nice life and have plenty of space before they inevitably get eaten so this is for medium sized dubia roaches. I did used to breed dubia roaches but I just can't be bothered, I only have one gecko and she doesn't get through them that quickly so this is just for like store bought medium sized dubias. Until they get eaten I want them to have a nice life and a bit more space so that is what is in here. So moving down, this is the invertebrate rack. This has two exoterras. We'll start with this one. This is a medium low and this has my giant African land snail called Slushy, who is back here. And Slushy is an Arca catena marginata citralis. And if you want to find out more about Slushy's story or just watch snail videos in general, I have got a snail playlist on my channel, but this is the enclosure. I recently did a makeover and put some more fake plants and leaves. I also do have a colony of giant orange isopods that are somewhere in here. You might spot a few of them. They are all dotted around. There's one. So we also have isopods in there too. So next door to this is my millipedes. They live in a small exoterra. In here I've got a variety of different millipedes. I've got a Burmese beauty, a bumblebee, a tie rainbow. You won't see them but they are in here I promise. They are probably hiding deep in the soil but I'll put a few clips of what they do look like on so you can see them. But this is their enclosure. I also recently set this up for them and I'll put that video in the description but this is their enclosure. The soil goes all the way up towards the back and it's not very exciting. You probably won't see them very often but that is my millipede tank. So moving down to the last shelf, this is my colony of dairy cow isopods and then we also have my leopard gecko enclosure which has my leopard gecko orbit who is probably hiding right now, you probably won't see her but I bet you any money she is in this hide, yep she is. So I'll put a clip of her, what she looks like on screen but she is a really good girl and this is her enclosure. So underneath her tank is more storage, this is for the reptiles and the invertebrates. We've got things like cuttlefish and supplements. This one has a bag of leaves in, as you do. But all of this is packed full of supplies for them that I don't really want on display, but I've managed to put quite a fair bit in these four boxes. So this corner is not very interesting. It's a bit redundant. I just use this as a dumping ground for things that I don't really want on display, but I do have to get to quite often. Things like my tripod, and when I'm not using it, my filming lights, which are here, all go in this corner and also things like bags of bedding down there but I really wanted to put some sort of artwork up on this wall because it's quite empty and I just realised I've just hit 100,000 subscribers which means I'll be getting my silver play button and I don't know where to put it so I was thinking of putting this on that wall let me know what you think should I put it there? I think so So moving round, finally we have my mouse enclosure and above this I painted this archway. It looks pink, I promise it's not. It's more of like a beige colour but I've got the shelf and a fake plant and a bunch of mouse stuff, mouse pictures, mouse paintings, a little mouse on a mushroom. Really cute and it looks really odd sometimes when you've got the mouse enclosure all the way down here but when you lift the lid up it's just the perfect fit to not hit the shelf so that has to be that high up unfortunately. But this is my mouse enclosure, it's a DIY IKEA Linmon and it's on this storage unit also from IKEA that I cannot remember the name of but in here are my five mice. We've got Fleet, Meadow, Dove, Possum and Flurry 
and I think they're all asleep in here at the moment. Yep, there they are. So the mice also have a natural theme in their enclosure. It's a bit of a mess at the moment because that is how they like to do things, but that is their enclosure. But this combination works really well. I've got plenty of storage for all of their extra toys and supplies and accessories in here. And I have had to pull this whole thing quite a fair bit away from the wall because otherwise this lid would not rest and actually stay propped up against the wall. So I have had to pull the whole thing forward a bit just to make a bit more space and you can't really tell unless you're actually back here and having a look but it does work out quite well because I can store extra hay and bedding and like tunnels and stuff all hidden behind the mouse enclosure and you wouldn't even know that it was back there. So the last few things next to the mice we have a bin also from Ikea and then also their carrier again just in case of emergency we've got this is right next to them and this is a tiny bin cage I made myself and then on top of that is a dustpan and brush also from Ikea and then hanging up on a command hook we have got this big ugly bag I think it's supposed to be for like horses or dog things but this is really good because you can keep this zip shut and I put all of the dirty rat hammocks and towels and bath mats and things for them in this and it does contain quite a fair bit of the smell so in between washes this is really good and also I just put the whole thing in the washing machine and you don't get like hairs and random bits of food in your washing machine so this is great and then next to this is possibly the worst thing in the entire room I know it's really silly but I cannot stand the colour of this broom I might buy a new one just to look more aesthetically pleasing but Having a broom is a must. The bedding gets absolutely everywhere and I am constantly sweeping, so there is my broom. <laughs> but yeah, that is my pet room. Slushy has now decided to make an appearance. This is my pet room. I know it's small. I don't have hundreds of animals, but it suits us. It suits the pets I do have and the space I'm working with. And I'm really happy with it finally. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope it makes a lot more sense now seeing where everyone is located if I'm showing the pets or showing parts of the pet room, I hope it makes a lot more sense to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.